Not all beads need to be round. Beads come in many shapes and sizes, but check out these ones. These are Czech glass daggers. Aren't they adorable? And I've teamed them here with some glass cubes and some metal round 3mm balls. Hi, my name's Carol. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, thanks for joining me. And if you're coming back, it's lovely to see you again. Today I'm going to make a beginner project. This is a, uh, a necklace, it's just a stringing exercise and showing you how to put on a clasp. So it's a wonderful necklace and it's actually uh, made for a friend of mine who's a redhead. So these colours will just be stunning on her. Now make sure you watch to the end of the video because there's a little bonus there for you. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and of course ring the bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new projects and you'll never miss a thing. Let's get started. To make this cubes and daggers necklace, you will need nine of these Czech glass daggers. These ones, the colour is called Crystal Capri Gold, but they're actually a beautiful copper colour. You'll need 62 of these 3mm black metal balls, or 3mm beads, uh, 52 of these 4mm glass cubes, two 1.5mm crimps, one 6mm jump ring and of course a clasp, this one is a 12mm lobster clasp. You'll need 60 centimetres approximately of tiger tail and as far as tools are concerned I'm using a bead stopper and I will use my flush cutters but you could use scissors if you wanted to and I'll be needing to use my chain nose pliers. Let's get started. Whenever I start a necklace I always start in the centre with the centre bead. This way you get that centerpiece done and then you can do the easy thing of stringing just the, uh, the rest of the necklace. So I'm starting my necklace with a dagger in the middle. I have nine daggers. You always use an uneven amount when you're using a bead as a focal point because then one will hang in the center. So I'm going to put on a dagger. I'm going to put on a three millimeter metal ball and I'm going to put on a glass cube. And on the other side, I'm going to put on a three millimeter ball as well. And another glass cube. So that's what I have. And now I'm going to put on another three millimeter ball on either side. Now I'm actually going to use my bead stopper to stop the beads falling off the other end of the wire while I string the rest of them. So if you haven't seen a bead stopper before, it's like a spring, it has little handles on either end and you just squeeze it, put your wire or your stringing material between and let it go and then your thread can't move and it stops the beads from falling off the other end. Alrighty, so now I'm going to put on a dagger. And just repeat this pattern, dagger, metal ball, and a glass cube, and another metal ball. So I'm going to repeat that until I've got all of my daggers, I've used up all of my daggers. Now I have all of my daggers on and that's my centre focal part done. I've got my bead stopper on one end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide, I'm actually going to put my bead stopper on both of the ends for the moment. So I'm just going to open it up and pop that wire, both pieces of wire through. I'm just going to put that aside for a minute. Now what I want to do is I want to divide the rest of these beads into two. Alright I've divided my beads up into two groups and the reason I did that was so that I didn't have to count every single bead that I put on from here on in. I can just thread this pile on and on one side and this pile on the other and not have to worry. So I'm going to take my bead stopper off one of my wires, leave the other one in, and I'm just going to continue the pattern of the cube and the black ball. So starting off with a cube, and then a black ball, 
and another cube and I'm just going to repeat that till I've used all of the black balls. Now I will finish with a ball. Okay now I've strung all my beads. I've, I've strung the same amount of beads on one side as the other. I'm just going to double check that. See how good my counting was. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold the necklace by the centre bead here and just push all the beads down and make sure that I've got the right number and clearly I have so my counting was pretty good this time. Alright so all that's left now is to put the clasp on. So I'm just going to remove my bead stopper from one of my wires leaving it on the other and I'm going to thread on one of my tiny crimp beads. Okay now when you're threading tiny things like this it's often best to put them down on the mat rather than trying to pick them up and do this because you can never see them. So if you put it down on the mat you can see exactly where it is and put your string through the holes. Right that's that. Now I'm going to put my clasp on and then I'm going to go back down through my crimp bead and I actually like to go down through a couple of extra beads as well. And the reason for that is it just gives me a little bit more security that I haven't cut my wire, my stringing material, right up close to the crimp bead where it might fall out or slip out. Okay, so now pulling it down, you want it to be reasonably tight, but you want to give your clasp enough room to move. So if I show you that, you can see, oops, you can see there I've still got a little bit of room to move. I could pull it tighter but I don't want to because I want that to be able to move. Now just holding that I'm going to take my uh, chain nose pliers and I'm going to squeeze that crimp bead flat. I'm actually going to push the beads out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So I want the wire to be running through the crimp bead side by side and Gonna move it up a bit because it's moved and then I'm just going to take my pliers and I'm going to give it a good squeeze nice good squeeze now if you have crimping pliers you will squeeze it again but I I'm not using crimping pliers today so then I'm just going to run my beads up close to that and you can see you can't really see the crimp you can buy crimp covers um, I didn't have any black ones so I decided not to use a crimp cover and I'm just going to snip off my short end and just run the beads back up so that that end goes into the next bead there so you can't see it. Alright so that's one end and now I need to make sure that there's no gaps in my necklace that all of the beads are nice and close together and take my bead stopper off the other end and I'm going to basically repeat the process. So putting on the crimp bead first, then the jump ring. Now this jump ring, if you have a look at it, it isn't quite closed properly. Not sure if you can see that. I'm just going to take my pliers and make sure it's closed properly. If you don't know how to clo open and close jump rings, I have a video called Jump Rings versus Split Rings where I talk about how to close a jump ring properly. Right. It's just a little bit out of shape so just giving it a squeeze. You can see there now it's closed properly. So I'm going to thread that on next and then I'm going to take my wire back down through the crimp bead and again I'm going through a couple of those probably three beads if I can get it through. Sometimes it's a bit tricky. Whoops, came out of everything through the crimp bead and now down through those beads. One more, one more for good luck. Alright, now I'm going to pull that tight but you can see I've got this gap here so I actually need to pull the long end until the beads are all nicely closed up. Just holding the jump ring and pulling down. So same thing on this end, you want to make sure you've got a little bit of a space so that the jump ring can move around. And I've got, you can see here I've got a little bit of space so I'm just going to move everything again so that I don't have that space. Thank you. 
Right. No, I've still got too much space. Let's try that again. Sometimes it's just a matter of giving it a really good tug. Right, now I've got, I'm holding my short end out of the way and I'm just going to give my crimp bead a good squeeze again. Really good firm squeeze. And what that does is it flattens it so that you, the wire goes through and it can't move now. Then I'm going to take my cutters and just cut off that end, the short end. And just make sure that that little end goes inside the next bead. There we go. All right. So there's your necklace. This necklace is actually for a friend's birthday and she's a redhead so these uh, colours will look amazing on her. And I think I'm going to make a pair of earrings to match. So a bonus for you, I'll make the earrings now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the glass daggers and a couple of the balls and one of the cubes. I'm going to get some 26 gauge wire. I've got no, about 10 centimetres. I won't need that much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to thread on the dagger and I'm just going to bend the wire up like this to the top and I'm going to hold holding both of the wires between my fingernails I'm just going to give it a twist, a couple of twists. Okay, so now I have that and I'm going to take my flush cutters and I'm going to cut off that short tail of the wire. I've got a little end sticking out so I'll just give that a squeeze down. Next I'm going to put on a ball. My balls are stuck together. <laughs> and my cube. And another ball. I didn't want to be these to be flashy earrings, flashy earrings, just really simple because uh, I think the necklace is a real statement piece. Now I'm going to take my round nose pliers, holding the wire in the jaws. I'm just going to press, um, bend the wire away from me at a right angle. Then I'm going to rotate my pliers around so that they're on the top of that. And then I'm going to bring this wire and I'm going to bend it all the way down, around and down in front of the jaws of the pliers. I'm going to rotate my pliers again and I'm just going to wrap that wire four times around like that. Okay, now I'm going to take my flush cutters and I'm going to cut really close in that wire. And just, you can see I've got a little end there, so I'm just going to squeeze that down. Just straighten everything up. I can still see the end. When you're making a wrapped loop like that, it's always good to rub your finger over it to make sure it's not sticking, the end isn't sticking out. And if it is, just give it a bit more of a squeeze and it will eventually go in. All right, so now I'm going to take an ear wire and I'm going to open the loop and I'm doing that by, I know that this side of the loop opens, not this side, so I'm going to hold it in my pliers like that with my uh, chain nose pliers and I'm just simply going to hold the earring and rotate my hand down which brings the loop up which will open it. I'm going to pop that on there and I'm just going to reverse that process. Now if you need help with wire, wire wrapped loops or with opening and closing loops, I suggest you check out either my wire wrapped loop, loop video or my how to make a basic loop video. 
All right, so there's the earring. I need to make another one. Okay. So there's the earrings and the necklace. Really basic, simple earrings to go with this stunning necklace. And I know that she will love it. It will look gorgeous on her. So I'm really pleased that I've made it for her. I hope you've enjoyed this video and making this necklace with me. If you have, please subscribe to my channel, like the video and ring the bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new project, which is usually once a week. Thanks for watching and have a great day.